morning. It is a sunshiny day in the south, and it's going to brighten up brighter than anything because my bright and shining co-host, Bill Sinyard, is here. How many years were you the co-host here that you just made the day better? I with think it was uh, about 58 years. Yeah, about 58 years yeah. with music and madness and craziness. And you dubbed my makeup Sherry Stay Makeup, and you got by with teasing me a lot. And often people would think he was mean to me. No, 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 no. That's the way we wanted it to be. Well, I only did what I was getting paid to do. So. That's right. That's right. I'd say, really get me today, and he really would. Today, on the way to work, I became an angry old white woman. I looked at the gas prices, and I said, Oh my gosh, I bought gas yesterday, it was $2.99. Today, it's three nineteen nine. Explain that to me. Well, my wife says that they do it because they can. Exactly. There's no other reason. They no other reason. They, can. they do it because and they can. we can't stop them. We put up with the foolishness. We are the problem. So we're gonna blame ourselves <clears throat> for not voting right, for not throwing out those dummies who are doing this to us and for not really making them accountable because they're not accountable to anything. If you'll look, they're not accountable for anything. They jack our taxes up, we don't care. We still do stupid stuff. They, um, interest rates, are you kidding me? The interest rates, I called yesterday. I'm helping a young man to buy the house that he grew up in. His payment on a $200,000 house is $1,555 a month. Now, what do you think of that? I wouldn't want it. Is that not <laughs> ridiculous? Yeah, it is ridiculous, but what do you do? I mean, I rent know. is that much. Sure, in I exactly. Talk to all That's the time. what they said. You yeah. either rent, you rent to build your own wealth, which I advise that to everybody. And what is that saying? You marry the rate, and you marry the house and divorce the rate. After the rate comes down, then you redo it. Well, then you have more closing costs. And you usually extend the number of years. So exactly. You, you know. But we've got to do something because first time <laughs> buyers are no longer, they're sad and they're depressed and well, I, I depression. Often, I often ask people nowadays, how are people just getting out of high school and college going to make it? I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. We talked a little bit before the show about how I told some guys in their 80s that they lived the better days of this country because even though wages weren't as much back then, mm -hmm. Things didn't cost near as much back right. then, so you were actually able to make it sure. a little bit better. Sure. And they, they, those people actually saved money. Yeah. And you, yeah. it's hard to do that for people nowadays. Well, when you think about it, and, and I think about this a lot, my first job in Atlanta, an official job, I had a bunch of little <coughs> clunky monkey jobs, but my first official job, I made $65 a week, brought home $51.21 a week. That's only $200 a month that I brought home. Yeah. Okay, our rent, we were renting a little place next door to Krispy Kreme on Ponce de Leon in Atlanta. It was $90 a month for rent. That's high rent when you're bringing home $200 sure. a month. But I had a roommate and I had two more jobs. I didn't live on that $65 a week. And I think that's the difference today. I know somebody two miles from here who wouldn't get a job in a pie factory. And I get so angry, I, I just want to smack her. Because I'm like, you are not Princess Diana. Get right. off your dead butt and go to work. But she's like, oh, this and oh, that. And I'm like, oh, get over it. You know, you know, you and I have both worked two jobs most of our lives. Because that's the American dream. You can do it. You can have as many jobs as you want because jobs are everywhere. And then we got Princess Diana sitting out there that can't work. Oh, I'm, I'm depressed. I'm traumatized. I, but get over it. Just get over it and go to work. Well, the old scripture says, uh, if a man doesn't work, neither shall he eat. Exactly. So. Well, she's eating good because she's got people helping her, and it just makes me smack mm. and choke. And then we have single women, like my granddaughter, who is working, going to college, taking care of her child, gets no, no aid from the federal government. She didn't qualify for food stamps. She makes too much. She doesn't make too much. She doesn't even make enough to rent a place to live. She didn't cross the border, did she? She didn't cross the border. There you go. She didn't cross the border. That's another story. That's another story. <clears throat> but I told her yesterday, I said, Ansley Elizabeth, we're going to keep applying for you help until your nanny's on the news. 
and your nanny's going to be on the news nationwide because I'm going to blow a gasket. It's not fair that the hardworking, the ones bettering themselves by going to college, the ones raising their children themselves and not giving them up so defects has to deal with them, can't get help. And it makes me so mad I could puke and choke. And what do you get out of it? She just keeps smiling and saying, well, Nanny, she's healthy, we're happy, da 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 And good. I'm like, that, yeah, That's she has attitude. a positive attitude. Yeah. yeah, it goes a long way. It goes a long way. There's yeah. a lot of things that we talk about here you can't fix, I can't fix. It's just too big for mm -hmm. us to fix. Voting does help, of course, mm -hmm. to get the right people in. Right. But the system is broken. The system is totally, absolutely it's annihilated. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, fixing, as they say. Yeah, you know, I was talking to somebody the other night, and she she asked me how old I was, and I told her, and she said, "You are not," and I said, "I are too." You didn't, li you didn't lie, did you? <laughs> no, I told her the truth, and she said, "Are you serious?" <laughs> she said, "I never thought that," and I said, "I've seen it all, lady. I've been here so long. I've seen it all. You and I are not too far apart, but we remember good times, bad times." Don't, I, don't say I'm old. <laughs> you're not old. But I remember, I remember a happy, healthy childhood where we went to the park, we played, our mom told us, cross the street, be careful, watch when you cross the street, go to the park and play, when you get hungry, come home, I'll fix you lunch, I'll go back to the park. Kids can't even do that today, Bill. We talked about uh, the other day, my wife and I were talking about how I used to ride a bicycle in Cartersville from downtown Cartersville out to near the Indian Mounds on the on the river. Oh out yeah, there. yeah. I mean that's a six or seven mile ride, mm -hmm. or if not eight mile ride. Today to you would my be my grandmama out there. You would be you would be stolen. You oh, would yeah. be trafficked yeah. in in sex slave. I mean, it, it, there are so many things happening on our streets in America that we don't want to talk about. We don't want to discuss because we don't want to really believe that it's happening. It is happening. Oh, it's happening. It is happening. And um, I, I was looking. You know, when you think about the young lady at Georgia who, you know, first of all, she had done her college, doing her RN, succeeding, successful, bright young life was snuffed out because, because, yeah. because. And it's because we have an open border. It's because we have a politician at that house that we won't discuss because then we'll get but at that house that uh, needs to be removed because I think the damage that has been done with letting in those millions and millions of people that haven't been vetted. Most of them, a lot of them, have come out of jails in Venezuela, in Honduras, and it's crazy. What they have turned loose on American streets, I don't think in my lifetime or your lifetime, mm. it can be corrected. Probably not. And I think it goes a little deeper in that too because a lot of families in this nation, mamas and daddies don't stay together anymore. Right. And, and it affects the child and, and so, they see nothing positive about their life. And mm -hmm. so even American citizens that are already here, they're acting stupid. So, right, it, right. It reminds me of scripture I read too about where in the last days, which I believe we're in, mm -hmm. uh, the a natural affection of man one to another, love toward one another, right. loving your neighbor. So right. It will wax cold, it, it'll, it'll wane. And so I think we're seeing that. Sure, And, and sure. people are just out for the money and they're out yeah. for just, they're just mad people. They'll kill you for nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the key. I, <clears throat> Phyllis Gerard was with me one day in Atlanta, and I will never forget this. This has been over 30 years ago. We stopped in Atlanta. We were delivering to all the Kroger stores. And I looked down and I said, oh, Lord, Phyllis, we're on empty. I better stop and get some gas. We were on Cleveland Avenue in Atlanta, very, very rough area. <laughs> I pull over to the gas pump. I pump $1 worth. I pay for it, jump in there and leave. And she said, you got a dollar's worth? And I said, do you know where we are in Atlanta? That was 30 years ago. It was a bad neighborhood. Then it was a bad neighborhood, but it wasn't a violent gang ridden neighborhood. Today, there are so many violent gang ridden neighborhoods because we opened our border and we allowed the drugs in. We allowed the gang members in. And, and when you think about a gang initiation, it's often to randomly find somebody and kill them. Mm -hmm. So if you think the ride by shootings on the interstate are just somebody who got angry, no. Much of it is initiation into a gang. Yeah, it makes you think twice when you want to go fly somewhere. We just went to California and back and you go to the airport and you oh, wow. go to certain places you just don't want to you go. You don't want to go. No. Yeah, you don't want to go. And, and as a single woman, and again, we're gonna share that with y'all today, as a single woman driving alone a lot, I worry, and you would, you would crack up if y'all could see me out there. I'm like, 
I'm guarding, I make sure all my doors are locked while I'm driving. If I stop at a red light, I make sure my doors are locked because you don't know who, and it's just like Lakin, she had no idea that her jog that day was gonna end her life. She was living her life, a normal life, doing everything right. And then somebody who had no right to be in our country took her life. You are packing heat, aren't you? No, but I need to be. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I of, need to be. The state of Georgia yes. now has made it to where you don't have to have a carry Yes, I, I absolutely so. need to be. After Angela died from a gunshot, I have this weird thing about guns. I could shoot a gun. I actually, I, I was pretty good. I, I won a lot of ham and turkey shoots. I was pretty good. So if I make you angry, I could probably hit you anywhere I wanted to, or if you make me angry. But, but I just, after that, I haven't been able to do that. But I need to, because this is a time that we need to protect ourselves. Well, just remember, a gun is an inanimate object. It lays there until somebody picks it up and does something with it. Right. The gun's right. not the problem. Right, it's the exactly. Right here is the problem. Exactly, exactly. Or right here. Yeah, say. right there. Uh, and let's talk about the heart of America. The heart of America today has an opportunity to turn it around. One term cannot possibly turn around all the destruction that's been done in four years. We have seen things happen to our country that we never dreamed. I never dreamed, and y'all, I'm on my second box of Cheerios now, and I talked about this last week. Six dollars and eighty-eight cents. I'm addicted to this little kind of Cheerios, and I put craisins in it, so that's my snack three times a day. I have that, and it's got all kinds of pumpkin seeds and different things in it. But for fourteen ounces of that, it's six dollars and eighty-eight cents. Is that not crazy? Uh, a little bit of dirt might sound a little cheaper to eat. I tell you, days. when <laughs> Melissa goes to the grocery store, does she come home well, mad? honestly, she turns the grocery shopping over to me these days. And, okay. And she just can't stand it. It makes her mad. So I know. Well, I've that's I've got me. more patience than she does. So yeah. she gives me the money and says, go buy the yeah. groceries. Well, I, I went to two <laughs> stores this weekend, and I chose what was on sale. And I laughed because they had uh, Frosted Flakes on sale, four for $8. So I got that, and like Frosted Flakes, they're good. But I like my Cheerios better. So I stand there at that aisle, and I'm staring at that Cheerios box, and I could feel my face getting flush and my blood pressure going up because I was like, I want those Cheerios. Well, I ended up buying them and paying that stupid price. But then I've been mad all week about it. As I snack on my Cheerios, I'm mad about it. It's not fair. No. The well, farmer's not getting rich. You know, no. it's crazy. Well, it all goes back to gas prices. Because yes. when a diesel truck, as you well know, has to ship something across mm -hmm. from one to the other, yep. and the prices are that high, they've got to pass it on to sure. the consumer. Sure. And one of my favorites is buying ice cream. I mean, I, I love ice cream. <laughs> and it's all air now. But, yeah, it's but all air. I have my limit, and I've got a price in my head. If it goes above that price, I'll let it sit there and rot. Mm -hmm. I won't buy it. And they can yeah. just keep it. Yeah, I'll yeah, do without it. yeah, yeah. So. Well, the the thing about ice cream that really cracks me up, and and I I like ice cream, I like orange sherbet, I like all that stuff. But the idea that when you scoop into it, you feel it's full of air. It's full of air. Yeah. I don't know how they whip it and do what they do, but it is no longer that creamy well, consistency that we were used to. Used to be in a in a half gallon carton, and now it's not even yeah, half that. Yeah, that's this so. little bee thing. Oh. But anyway, all that's uh, it's cumulative where it all adds up. And, and somebody told me the other day that the average thing that you buy at the grocery store now is four dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a hundred dollars in your pocket, you're gonna walk out with twenty five items. You better right. be very selective as yes. those twenty five items yes. you're picking. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and it, it's so crazy because I've psyched myself into, will you buy this at this store, this at this store, and this at this store? None of that makes any sense because by the time I leave that one store I'm in to save a dollar on one item and I go to Walmart where it's exactly one dollar cheaper, I've spent the gas. So you're wasting your time and energy. They're not only taking advantage of our pocketbook, they're taking <laughs> advantage of our time and energy because we're still fighting those prices. So we do go to different stores to buy different things. Well, I'll tell you something else that burns my rear end at the grocery store is they're making you wait on yourself. Yes. I can go up through the grocery store, buy all my stuff, and never speak to a, an associate. Exactly, never. exactly. But at the same time, I get into some places where I've had this happen to me. I bought ice cream, frozen stuff, and I've had it all in my shopping cart. And I get up to the register, and it does not take cash. I don't use a credit card. Right. So it doesn't take cash. And I can't find anybody to take my cash. Yes. No other place is open yes. down the way there. So you know what I do? I leave the cart sitting there full of groceries. And I just walk out. Oh, no. And let wow. them deal with it. 
Because I love if it. they're that stupid. Yes, like, and they <laughs> you can't fix stupid not even with duct tape. No. Well, I'll tell you something else. We was in California, and uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, they didn't know this, but we got up to Walmart, one of the stores there we went into. They're all the same. But we went in there, and they do not give you bags, plastic bags, to put your groceries in. What? You, you have to buy them. They're 10 what? Cent, 10 to 25 cents per bag. Oh, my gosh. To, buy, to get them in a bag. So I'm, a, I'm just grabbing all my stuff like this and toting it out in my arms. Oh, my gosh. And they're, they're scrambling around figuring out what they're going to do. What most people in California do, though, is they carry their own recycle bags. They carry mm -hmm. bags from home to right. get the groceries. Right. They already know this in their head because yeah. they've been there, yeah. living there. Yeah. But visitors don't know that. Wow, that is crazy. So if you go out to California, yeah. take your bags with you. Yeah. Well, I went to a grocery store this weekend. It's funny that you brought that up, and you had to have your own bags. And so I took a bunch of my bags from home, and I da 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 da. But by the time I left that store. Now, not only, I only saved three dollars on three items, a dollar on three different items, but everything else was off brands. It wasn't what I like. I bought one item and eh, it wasn't as great as I, ugh, it was awful. It, it wasn't just not great, it was awful. And, and, and so when I left there, I spent $115 and I wasn't happy at all. And I thought, I will not make this mistake again. I will not make this mistake again. I'm a select shopper and it is so funny because I buy, mm -hmm. if it's on sale, I get it. If it's on a good sale, I buy multiples of it. Mm -hmm. And I cost myself about 60 cents the other day. And 60 cents is just 60 cents, but it made me so mad. Not anymore. I went in and I, in my mind, Walmart is cheaper than the other store. And, and I'm not gonna mention it because I love that store, but <clears throat> I bought me four cans of salmon at Walmart. Then I walk into my favorite store that I love and I shop there every week. And it was cheaper there because it was on sale this week. <laughs> I'm like, okay. You have for, to do your homework you know, ahead of time. You have to do your homework yeah. ahead of time. Yeah, they're wearing us out, making us do homework. Well, we want to talk a little bit about single woman because we're going to go to that in just a minute. Let's talk a little bit about, number one, how much fun that was to be a part of that. Yeah, it was fun. We uh, All that was filmed, or most all of it was filmed in the Jasper area. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And... Um, the videographer, he was very good about it and uh, set us all up, told us what to do. And I played the part of a banker mm -hmm. and uh, approving. Will you hand me a piece of tissue right there? Um, Sorry. Uh, I was approving. Got, you the, can tell my allergies are driving me crazy. Thought you had to go to the bathroom or something. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> no, anyway, no, no, my he, allergies are good. He set us all up in there and I played the part of the banker and I was to approve of the young lady who was. Single uh, woman. Who was making it in life. She was coming up in the ranks. Right. And the young lady, of course, is my actual daughter. So yes. So she was the star of that video. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, one of the fun parts was we went to Ronnie's uh, concert down at Douglasville that same year, and he invited her up onto the stage to sing that song with him. Yeah. And it was a yeah. lot of fun. I love it. I love it. Well, we're going to go to Single Woman. If you've seen it, share it with everybody. You know it's really cool, and it was done in Jasper. But if you haven't seen it, Pay attention because she starts out in a little single wide trailer with a man who is a bit abusive, wasn't quite what she was looking for, and she ends up doing very, very well for herself. So here we go, let's salute single women. She's a single woman. Taking on the world, she's a single lady, all American girl. Hey, she don't need nobody to make her proud and strong. She's a single woman, and she's making it on her own. She gave up everything to be by his side. She thought he was a savior. That one true love in life Then things begin to crumble God knows how she tried To keep it all together Through the cheating and the lies Now she's a single woman Taking on the world She's a single lady All American girl She don't need nobody Make her proud and strong She's a single woman And she's making it on her own All I can do is watch her And it's driving me insane 
She's got it all together, breaking free from all her chains. And now I'll never know what it's like to play a part of her world in all its glory. I'm the fool that broke her heart. Now she's a single woman, taking on the world. She's a single lady, all American girl. She don't need nobody to make her proud and strong. She's a single woman and she's making it on her. healing hands of time what I wouldn't give for one more chance if I could only just make her mine she's a single woman taking on the world she's a single lady all American girl she don't need no man Make her proud and strong She's a single woman And she's making it on her own She's a single woman Taking on the world She's a single lady All American girl She don't need no man To make her proud and strong She's a single Go girl.